in general, what I like to see is a single, and, and it runs so counter a lot to the industry, so forgive me if I'm like out of step, but <clears throat> in general, I, I, I consider them kind of big adventures. And so uh, I do think that there is a crispness to essentially raising enough capital to essentially move you past the proof point on sustainability and scalability. And so you, you, know, you might want to dribble it in, do a little bit at a time, but just to keep everybody focused on the substance of it, which is the execution, personally, I, I, I gravitate to uh, really getting yourself to the point where you've eliminated the risks around does it really work, is it going to be sustainable, can you scale it, and you are literally just into more traditional forms of financing to make it big. The counter sometimes is, no, you ought to needle that in, and I think sometimes the venture firms want to manage risk by kind of dribbling it in, and I, I, I'm not sure I have anything intelligent to say on that other than I would always suggest financing it to a major inflection point, a major proof point along that spectrum so that when you come back to raise money, you never find yourself in the situation where you wanted to get to A, you raised a bunch of money to get to A, but you haven't gotten there yet. Because that's a hard conversation to have with someone about, okay, inevitably there's potholes, inevitably you miss, inevitably you get delayed. And we are all too optimistic when we look at how hard something's going to be. But if you said you were gonna get to A and you miss, that can be painful when you come back for more money. So that's the only comments I would have. Jason, David, Tom, any other thoughts on how to it? Yeah, I, I would uh, just reinforce uh, you know, the first concept we always talk about is thinking big, but the second uh, corollary to that is under promise and over deliver. And in, in my mind, as an entrepreneur, you should be raising enough money to make sure that you can under promise and over deliver and, and achieve those objectives. And you know, in general, you know, uh, investors want to flush out the biggest risks in your business as soon as possible with the least amount of money. And that's the mentality that we're, we're thinking about because once you flush those risks out, it becomes more of an execution uh, game. And, and there's a lot of capital out there available for an execution game once it's proven. Um, I think the other, the other thing I'd say is, uh, um, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about raising money, uh, and, and this is more tactical than strategic, but you gotta be thinking about who you're talking to as well. And frankly, people with small funds wanna raise, or wanna invest small amounts of money, and people with large funds wanna invest large amounts of money. So you also should be thinking about your audience in context of that, because what might be a good answer for one investor may not be a good answer for another investor. And that's not trying to um, advise you to raise dramatically more money than you think you need, because I don't think that generally is a good discipline. But you should also be making sure you're taking your audience into account. And, uh, and if you need to throw a few more risk factors in, into flushing those additional two or three risks out, because you can raise $10 million versus $5 million, because you're talking to somebody who's willing to write those size checks, I think you ought to be thoughtful about who you're talking to and making sure it fits you know, uh, a, a couple of those key risk metrics in your business.